Well, that's a great question. I mean, look, the Russian initial strategy has failed. There's no doubt about that. You know, the original original expectation of, of what the Russians would face is, is just wrong. They thought this campaign would be over. They thought it would be relatively easy with light casualties. So they really are running out of choices. They have only a limited number of options with the failure of the first campaign. The options are on the low end to negotiate and try to end it. Now, that might be rational. The rational thing is to try to say, oh, look, we failed. We're not going to conquer Ukraine. Let's try and reach some kind of deal and end this war. If they're not going to do that, and that seems to be something that might be too humiliating right now for the Russian leadership, particularly President Putin, to do, well, then they have to say, okay, then we have to escalate. And then how do we escalate? They can either make another huge army, because this army is going to be combat ineffective soon. The original Russian army is not going to be able to fight for that much longer before it's going to need a break. So they can either then build up another huge army and try and go back in. That will take a long time and be very expensive, and you might have to use conscripts. If you're not going to do that, then you have to say, well, maybe we have to use other weapons. I don't think they're going to use nuclear weapons. I think that's um, really quite uh, extreme, and I'm very, I'm reluctant to say that the Russians would ever think about doing that. Chemical and biological, I also don't think is that likely that they'd use them, but more likely than nuclear weapons. Uh, as a way of trying to use a, you know, a very lethal weapon to try and change the political calculation of the Ukrainians. Chemical or biological? Where, what would be the preference, Phillips? I, I, the, well, what we don't know actually is what the Russians have on hand right now. We know that we, they've used some different weapons in Syria, but we don't know about the stocks. I mean, we have to be somewhat careful, too, about using the phrase, oh, they can use these in a large scale. We don't actually know what, you know, what was left from the, the Soviet Union period. A lot of the earlier stuff was presumably destroyed. So I, I actually don't want to hypothesize on what they might do. We know we can say when they did use these uh, weapons in Syria, they used them mostly as terror weapons. 